It is the game everyone is talking about, the most expensive game in NFL history. The average ticket costing about $10,000, not to mention the bloated price of hotels and airfare. But is it really worth it? What's it really like to go to a Super Bowl? It's finally getting close, guys. We've been talking about this for days. New York City rolling out the red carpet. We've been to two of them, and we'll reveal the good and the bad, and tell you whether it's really worth it or not in this episode of Window Seat. If ever you were going to go to a Super Bowl, this might be the one worth attending. Las Vegas, Sin City, gambling galore, cool, newish stadium, celebrities everywhere, and of course the big matchup, Chiefs and Niners. This year has been a, it's been a, it's been a wild year, man. Obviously it's a, it's a big game and it's, it's been good. We know it's going to be a big one. Vegas is consistently the most popular place to watch the Super Bowl, even when it isn't hosting the game. The greatest sporting event is coming to the greatest arena on earth. It's more than the Super Bowl. It's the Super Bowl in Las Vegas. But have you ever wondered if it's really worth dropping 10 grand for one game? And that's just the tickets, doesn't even include travel getting there. What do you get for that money? We're here to offer a little expertise in that department because Sean's been to one Super Bowl, Super Bowl 48 at MetLife Stadium in Jersey, where the Seahawks destroyed the Broncos. This is the Fox Media Riser in the middle of Broadway. And I've been to two Super Bowls, Super Bowl 48 and then Super Bowl 50, where the Broncos beat the Panthers. And fans just can't get enough. How, you ask, did two men of meager means like us come up with the scratch to attend the Super Bowl? Getting to see something like this in person, in real life, for the first time. Well, I'm a TV news anchor in Denver, so they sent me to cover both games. It is absolutely the best arrangement in the world. You get paid to go to the Super Bowl and you get a press pass that gives you access to some of the coolest things all week. And at the time, Sean was a news photographer working with me. It sounds amazing and glamorous, but for the record, it was brutally cold at Super Bowl 48 and we stood outside for nine days covering the lead up to the game in a frigid Times Square. For the first time ever, the NFL is suggesting that date might be moved if it's too cold or snowy on Super Bowl Sunday. Okay, okay, yes, it was historically cold, but I won't come complain any further because the trade-off was we got to go to the Super Bowl. Which brings us to the best things about attending a Super Bowl and number one is hands down the entertainment. We got to see Bruno Mars perform at halftime and he was incredible. And for a couple of Broncos fans, believe us, this was the only highlight of that game. Fast forward to Super Bowl 50 in Santa Clara, California, two years later. Got to see Bruno Mars again at halftime, this time with Coldplay and Beyonce. And yes, this was another incredible concert. And got to see Lady Gaga perform the national anthem. Of course, this year, music fans will get to see Usher perform at halftime. Promises to be a great show. And it's a pretty safe bet folks will get to see Taylor Swift too, which is probably a bigger deal than the game itself for some fans. If you paid to see all of those artists in concert, it would cost you an arm and a leg, but at the Super Bowl, it's all included in the price of admission, as it should be. I mean, heck, most folks are dropping like 10 grand. Least they can do is throw in a free show. Next on the list of the best things about attending the Super Bowl are the events leading up to the big game. The NFL does a great job of creating an experience in the host city for football fans. This year in Vegas, that includes the Paramount Expedition, where you can get immersed in your favorite movies and TV shows, a little corporate synergy since Paramount owns CBS and CBS is showing the game. Also, the Pepsi Big Game Vault, where fans could win all kinds of prizes, a free Maluma concert from Sirius XM, a speakeasy sponsored by Casamigos, a million-dollar Madden Bowl competition at House of Blues with Green Day in concert, a Zach Bryan concert at the Chelsea, and Gronk Beach at Encore, where the four-time Super Bowl champ hosts a beach party and no doubt acts real bro -y. Those kind of events are always fun and certainly help build up the hype for the game, and it's worth checking out as many as possible. It is a special the NFL also has fan expo set up outside the stadium. Lots of cool, memorable stuff to experience here. You're also bound to run into famous people throughout the week, pitching products and trying to sell stuff. I ran into Vito Spadafor from The Sopranos in my hotel lobby. I forget what he was trying to sell, but he was pitching something. Under the circumstances, I felt it was the wisest thing to do. And we were lucky because as members of the press, we got to experience Media Day too. Lots of celebrities there, though we use the term loosely. Most famous people I ran into were Regis. But I thought sports, you know, I love sports. It's just to get you out of the house. That's all this is, isn't it? And Joe Piscopo. Well, I did uh, Saturday Night Live. Exactly. You'll see weirdos from all over the world jockeying for camera time and asking preposterous questions of the athletes. 
but you do get to get up close and personal with the stars of the game, which is really great and something I'll never forget. One other cool thing about the Super Bowl, for me at least, get this, I had a media credential, which means I got to sit in the press area, which is fine and everything, but I decided to meander into the stands to see what the view was like from up there, and unbelievably, I found two empty seats, very back row, very top of the stadium, right by the scoreboard, but here they were. Someone was a no-show to the Super Bowl, and these two seats, which cost someone thousands of dollars, went unused. So the usher let me and my photographer Rico sit there for the whole game, and it was spectacular. But, gotta be honest, that's about where the coolness of the Super Bowl ended for me. Let's run through the worst things about attending the Super Bowl in person, aside from the cost. For one, it's a very different crowd than most football games. A lot of the folks there are corporate, rich folks who aren't exactly the stand-on-your-feet-and-cheer game-day experience kind of crowd, so know that going in. Also, the game itself is actually, dare I say, a little bit boring. Because it's the Super Bowl, the NFL and the broadcast network squeeze in as many commercials as possible. Yo, these are the bomb! And they're air pop, not fried. Get this, someone actually broke down Super Bowl 54 minute by minute, and they discovered that while the game itself, including halftime, lasted three and a half hours, 51 minutes and 15 seconds of that was commercials. That's 24% of the broadcast. Which is fine, I get it, they gotta make their money, no sweat. Probably doesn't bother you if you're watching from home either. Those commercials are fun. I used to be pretty clueless about shopping. But the net result, if you're watching the game in person... I couldn't even see across the street because the air was so thick with boredom. It really does slow down the pace of the game, and you're left feeling, yes, a little bit bored at the biggest game of the year. The game lots of people paid $10,000 to attend. The food, the beer, pretty much the same you'd get at any football stadium. We mentioned the great entertainment and the halftime shows, and they are very cool, yes, but the audio and video are probably even better on your TV at home. Truth is, if you take the game itself and don't factor in any of the other frou-frou stuff, attending the Super Bowl is pretty much like attending a game at any other football stadium on any other given Sunday. Now look, of course, there's a certain cachet that comes with holding Super Bowl tickets, and the bragging rights you'll get for having attended the big game are unparalleled. And if you have the money to burn, go for it. Drop 10 grand on a Super Bowl ticket, soak up the events, have a great time. But as cliche as it may sound, and maybe as a consolation to those of us who couldn't afford to go even if we wanted to, I think you're better off spending that money on a really great TV and just watching from the comfort of your home. Unmitigated disaster for the Broncos. We don't want to sort of grovel in that. This, we're all bummed about this, and this is sort of a group therapy session, yeah. I think. Let those blowhards on television describe the experience for you while you sit there on the couch and count up all the money you saved from not buying into the hype. What are your superpowers again? I'm rich. <laughs> That's it for this rare domestic episode of Window Seat. We're back with our international travels with a brand new episode next Friday at 8 a.m. Eastern. Hope you'll join us then. Also, please let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Is the Super Bowl worth it? Have you been? Would you spend the money if you could? Also, like and share this video if you'd be so kind. And be sure to hit subscribe so you can follow our adventures as we travel to every country in the world. We'll see you next week. In the meantime, please check out one of these other videos from Window Seat. Thank you.